Hello everyone, this is Jasmina, and in this video I am going to talk about Batsa Basics. Now, this video has a little bit of general discussion on the philosophy of Batsa, and I think that, that part is worth listening to. Then there's a short bit about the details of exactly what a Batsa looks like. Most people who know what they look like can skip through that, and then there's just a little bit after that. So. Um, but this may be worth it even if you know what a batza is. Now, the this really part of it is really for the super beginners. I think a lot of people already know some of this information. There are many free sites that will calculate your batza, but not a lot of them will give you uh, your elemental breakdown. And that is key to interpreting your batza that will tell you um, what's, what's going on. Uh, because unless you're going to start from scratch and analyze the elemental balance yourself, uh, that's where a lot of the work comes in, I would say use one of these. So the, these are the best sites I know of. These first two are free. This one is free for a like a one or two week period, and then you have to pay, but they do have some short term um, options and uh, just make sure you cancel it um, but you know after you've gotten what you need but uh, Joey Yap um, has one and I'm not sure this is going to always be the right um, in fact I know it's not going to be right next year this should be 2005 but or 25 uh, but um, you also have to register here so you just so you can just Google Joey Yap's free Batsa calculator, and you'll get to the site where you're able to uh, get to basically this site listed. And then you can enter your birth date and time. You do need your time, and I'm a proponent of solar time, which I'll talk about in, in uh, a couple of videos from now. But uh, the, the, he does a, his, uh, results, the analysis, what comes out of it is in a different format, but it's in a very useful format. So I do refer to his work a lot. That is his analysis a lot and, and how to interpret it on, for you to understand what you're looking at. Now the BATSA calculator that this doesn't change its, um, its address but it actually allows you to th see three different methods of elemental breakdown. And it will tell you your daymaster strength in terms of percentages. Uh, you can have anything from 100% strong to 50-50 to 100% weak. So, you know, it can be anywhere in there. So it will tell you that in terms of uh, the things that are supporting you and the things that are opposing you. And then um, the, this last one, the Chinese Metasoft site, gives you yet another, uh, a, another interpretation or another school uh, and also will tell you in words what your day master strength is. So uh, that, is, that is good. And it actually gives it to you in the traditional sense and in the more modern sense. So the traditional sense is just based on uh, the, the day master and the month in which you were born. But really, you have to look at your whole chart to understand what your day master strength actually is. Now, one important thing that you everybody needs to know is that the Batsa does not show your fate, even though Joey Yap's book says destiny analysis. It's not destiny. What it does show is your potential. That is key. It shows you what is going to be easier for you to learn or what kind of skills are easier for you to pick up so that you can focus your attention on those, those areas. Now, at least 30,000 people share your same batsa at your time of birth. Of course, not all of them are still alive, but you know, this is a lot of people. And you know, even even really famous people, 
Albert Einstein, um, uh, the rich guys, uh, you know, like um, Bezos and all these kind of people. There are roughly 30,000 people that share their same batza, but they don't have the same fate uh, or the same results in their life. And of course, there are reasons why. Many of those people may have been born in a poor country. So these are things that really affect your potential that can ha have you have an easy way to get to your potential or maybe it's harder. So if you're born in a poor country, you tend not to have very good educational opportunities. So that really limits your potential. And if you were not born rich in these poor countries, it really, really limits your potential. There are some countries, including my own, where your opportunities are reduced due to gender, race, or religion. And there are other countries that are even worse than mine, uh, you know, especially when it comes to gender. Now, there, these factors have a great deal to do with your ability to have a good education and also have good job, job opportunities available. That is, uh, if the country doesn't have many good jobs because it's a poor country, well, your, your options are limited. Now, one big factor is how your parents raised you. Now, a lot of that has to do with what their opportunities were. So it's not always because they do something wrong. It's, they may also not have opportunities. One question to ask, did you travel regularly? Did you see new things or did you, or perhaps when you watch TV, did you watch um, educational uh, things? Of course, some places that's very hard to come by. Uh, that is educational stuff is not on TV very regularly. This improves your adaptability. If you travel regularly, you see people do things differently, but they, they're, doing well, it shows you other options and that improves your adaptability. What did your parents do in their leisure time? This is actually really, really important. Did they just watch TV or did they do something else like read or do crossword puzzles, exercise? You know, what did they do when they weren't working? If they did anything else other than watch TV, which is very passive, that sets a good example and shows you that, uh, that they enjoy learning, they enjoy testing themselves. This shows you how you should live your life because you get affected by this whether you realize it or not. So did you see your parents learning something new? It could be just a new recipe or trying something new, uh, you know, some unusual foods, you know, or did they just stick to their little narrow, this is all we eat or this is all we do. This is important. It sets another good example if they did learn something new and it teaches you that learning is a necessary part of life. Of course, assuming you want to improve your circumstances, and most people do. So these are things that you don't have a lot of control over, but you can still change. Now, this one is a big one. Did your parents coddle you? Were they helicopter parents, which is what we call them? Um, or did they allow you to struggle to figure something out by yourself? Now, not completely till you get so frustrated that you, you know, uh, you end up in tears, but that they let you work on things and only help you when they see it's absolutely necessary. If they allowed you to work things out for yourself, this improves your resilience and your confidence, your self-confidence in the ability to solve problems. So this, this is all good parenting. Um, of course, how well you can do this depends as, as a parent depends on how you were brought up and, and what your circumstances are. Not always can this be good because if your parents have to work just to survive so they can put food on the table and you've got nothing extra, well then things are going to be tougher. 
they, um, but they probably don't coddle you. They don't have enough time to. So that is good. Now, these are all things that you, of course, don't have any control over, and neither do you have much control over this. Severely traumatic experiences can affect your ability to take advantage of your batsa. One of the, I think one of the worst ones is prolonged, fairly severe child abuse, because this is all you ever know. This is from when you were a child. It, it is quite hard to overcome this. It can be overcome. It takes work and it usually takes some counseling. If you are unfortunate enough to experience war, especially as a child, this will really, really affect you. But if you, uh, even as a soldier, you can experience a lot of trauma from being part of a war. Uh, also experiencing a large natural disaster, such as the Maui fires, um, those people are definitely affected. But the something like this, unless you experience repeated natural disasters, uh, this is usually fairly temporary. Uh, it makes you real skittish about something for, for a good period of time, but then things get better. This is the easiest one to overcome. Uh, I think the hardest is probably prolonged severe child abuse. Now, the, these type of experiences, of course, destroy people's sense of security, and that basically robs them of the energy to persevere and grow. I mean, they just, they're stuck in their past experiences and they need help to get over them. So if any of that applies to you, you really need to find some help because this, um, this will allow you to move forward much faster in your life if you can overcome these past traumas. So all of these things are uh, things that keep people from reaching their potential. Uh, of course, a lot of these things you, you, have, you have no ability to change. Um, the last one you can get help with and uh, and the others you you simply have to overcome, <laughs> which is very hard to do. If it were easy, everybody would do it. So you just have to simply do your best. And the best is increasing your skills. Now, luck does play a part. Feng Shui can help with this, but Feng Shui does not work on its own. What feng shui does, it's actually an amplifier. Anything, any kind of energy or effort you put into improving your life, feng shui can amplify, if it's good feng shui, of course. So this is, this is the one thing that you can actually have some control over, is the feng shui of your place. You may have to move, but this is something that you can actually do something about. You can't change your batsa. Your batsa is what it is. Uh, you do have luck pillars, which I haven't really discussed here. That can give you opportunities for certain periods of time, but you can't change the heart of your batsa, but you can change your feng shui. Now, luck is probably the biggest factor between being super successful and successful. And by successful, I mean making a comfortable living so you have enough money left over to do some savings. Um, but even though luck is the biggest thing, your batsa is not irrelevant. It really does tell you where, what is the best place you could, should focus on so that you can move forward in your life. So to me, what you need to succeed is to use whatever talent your batsa gives you to their best extent, rather than just wandering through life. Now, you're, it is also likely that you will need to work quite hard on a small number of skills that you are not, you are not naturally talented in. So that, and these things are probably very uncomfortable and very hard. They're not easy, but if, if they were easy, everybody with a half decent childhood would be very successful. So this is what makes the difference between success 
and not success. Uh, and, and that is how hard you are willing to work to do what the job requires. And here, when we're talking about success, we are largely talking about monetary success, which allows you to have a family, a good family life, and it allows you to have health because you can afford to, to see doctors on a regular basis and get medication when you need it. I mean, all that. It affects everything. Now, this is the hard, this hard work, picking up a talent or having a certain type of action that isn't natural in your batsa. This is actually the heart of what balancing the batsa really means. It's not wearing something. Like if you're low on metal, you shouldn't be wearing a lot of metal. You should be more determined. You should, you know, learn how to be more determined and how to stick to things and work really hard and get it done no matter what it takes. That is what metal is, not what you put on your body. So here's where I'm going to start talking about what is actually in the batsa. If you already know this, you can skip ahead. Uh, there's only a little bit more that is relevant in information. But this is a totally random batsa. I have no idea what date this happens to refer to. The only thing I can tell you is the hour. This is like 3 to 5 in the afternoon. That's, that's the only thing that I can really tell you because the snake is always that time. Other than that, I don't know. Now, I've never seen them arranged any differently. Almost always, actually always as far as I've seen, the heaven stem is on the top row. These are always elements. Anything that's a stem is an element. The earthly branch, anything that says branch is an animal sign. Now, the animal signs do have an element associated with them. But this, is, this doesn't go into, into most people's uh, calculation of the elemental breakdown. What does get counted is these hidden stems. Now, these stems are associated with the animal signs. So this, the rabbit, has the wood, the yin wood, and that's it. It's the only one it has. And hidden stems will have anywhere between one and three elements. So I've got an example for each one of these. And there is what they call a main stem, or I'm sorry, I mean a main, a main chi in the hidden stems. And I have made those in bold and bigger. And then you have the sub chi, which is these extra ones. And they do make a little bit of a difference in the analysis, but it uh, isn't, uh, but it's still important that it's there. So, and so I will have a table later that will tell you all of the animal signs, what their elements are and what their hidden stems are. So this will come in later videos. You don't have to worry about it right now. A Joey app chart, a uh, Batsa calculator website, and the Chinese Metasoft site all will tell you this. And they, any site should tell you this, because otherwise it's ha half done. Now, you will hear the term pillar. That's a column. Column and pillar, they're pretty much the same thing. The year pillar represents something in your life. It's usually your parents or your grandparents, superiors at work, somebody who is either older than you or is in a higher position than you. That's what the year pillar represents. And these, the, what's here will tell you what kind of interactions you often will have or typically will have in your life because of what's here. Now, the month is a very important one. It tells you about your siblings, the interaction with your siblings, with your coworkers, and also tells you about your career. Uh, that is, how good your, usually how good your career will go. Um, it, it doesn't always tell you what your talent is, but it does tell you something about 
what will happen with your career and it interacts with your luck pillar. And I've, I've talked about this before and I'll talk about it more in some other videos. This is a pretty important pillar. The day pillar is also very important. It tells about yourself and your spouse. You are represented by your day master. Your day master is the heaven stem in the day pillar. So this person's day master is yin metal. We don't care about the animal sign. It is an element. So this person's is yin metal. Now the animal sign, it represents one spouse. And of course it will have its associated um, hidden stems. Now, just want you to know, this does not mean your spouse should be a pig. What this does with all the interaction with the rest of the chart, this will tell you or predict about how good the relationship will be, maybe what specific areas of your relationship there may be problems with, that kind of thing. Now, the last one is the hour pillar. This tells you about children, ideas, and investments. So these are kind of like output. This is what you produce. Now, investments, of course, produce for you, but uh, you have to put something in with an investment. And so that, again, is output. So now, the interpretation of your BATSA largely depends on the elements within your chart and how it interacts with your day master. That is, the day master is the focus. And, and a element can mean something different to different people if they have different day masters. So this is a key thing to understand. Now, the elemental breakdown is designed to inform you about something about your personality, your talents, and what skills you can easily acquire. That is, you have a natural ability to pick up these skills compared to uh, perhaps other parts of life. It also tells you about your strength, your personal strength, your emotional strength, at least what comes naturally. Um, the stability, how stable your personality is, um, also your growth potential. And this is based a lot on clashes and combinations and other interactions. And I'm going to talk about this kind of stuff in future videos. But if you use one of these things that does the elemental analysis for you, you will see, if you do all five of them, you will see that there are differences. Some people will have big differences, other people won't. Uh, and the more stable it is, let's say the more, the more fixed it is. That is, it, 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 you can be sure that you're getting it right. Now, just because different people come up with different things doesn't mean somebody's wrong. They look at the BATSA in a different method. Uh, that, that's all it means. And who's right? I have no idea. Uh, I, I, I mean, this has not been tested. And it, theoretically, it could be, but it would be expensive. So there are at least five different methods out there that I know of. And they're likely to give slightly different results. Some people, it's a little more significant. Occasionally, it can result in a significant difference for a single topic. And I've seen that with my own BATSA when it comes to health. And I've already covered this in another video. It's sitting somewhere on my channel. Um, one, one set of analysis says I should already be dead. And the other one says I can live to 103. Now, I don't think either one is right. Uh, obviously, one is definitely wrong because I'm still alive. But uh, uh, and haven't had any really, really significant health issues that endangered my life. So uh, obviously one is not right. But uh, uh, it may be because I, I'm, you know, I eat well. That is, I eat healthy foods. I'm still at a healthy weight, even in my 60s, which is like really unusual. Uh, maybe this is the reason why. I could surpass what that one 
analysis said. So, um, you, you know, I, I don't have a huge trust in BATSA, especially when they get super detailed. I think it does a good general overall view, though. And, and I think this can tell you what kind of, not what industry you should be in, but what kind of job, what kind of skills do you need, what kind of, uh, uh, what kind of things do you need to do in that job. Your BATSA can tell you which is your best job by what you do in the job, not by what quote-unquote industry it's in. I, I don't buy that at all. Maybe it made sense centuries ago when there was only like four or five different jobs out there. So that's basically it. I'd like to thank you for watching. Um, I know this was pretty simplistic, but uh, I wanted to be thorough and make sure everybody knew when I start talking about stems and pillars, everybody knew what was going on. Thanks again for watching.